Thank you for joining us today at the Kids Comfort Table. We're going to be talking today about the parable of the talents. Uh, so get comfortable around our coffee table so we can have a conversation. Does anybody want to start us with a prayer today? Okay, I will start us with a prayer. Bow our heads. Now, Lord, thanks for this opportunity to get together and learn from your words and your stories. So that we can have a better understanding of how you want us to act and behave uh, when we're trusted with things. You know, help us to have an open mind to whatever it is you're trying to tell us today. And for the listener, I hope that they're comfortable and they can hear the message that you have for them today. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to start by introducing a new word to you today. The word is stewardship. Does anybody know what that word means? Go ahead, Ava. You take care of what people give you. That's a good definition. Anybody else? Go ahead, Maya. Taking care of what people give you and giving back what the um stuff that they gave you. Very close. In 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 this terms, in the story we're going to be talking about, stewardship is use of money. Go ahead, Zoe. So it's like you should take care of the money. You, your master gave you, and then you can earn more to make your master happy. Yeah, that, that's really good. Okay, so, yes, stewardship is really taking care of or using well what you're given. And when our story, we're talking about money. So when God gives us something, he expects us to use it well, not just for ourselves. And there's a return on an investment. That means it gets bigger. So. If I give you one thing and you give me two back, then that's return on investment. So I'm going to read from the NIV Bible. I'm going to read this whole parable, okay? It's in Matthew 25, verses 14 through 30. Actually, I may stop halfway. So. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey, and I, I guess... I need to caveat, this is Jesus is talking, and he's talking about what the kingdom of heaven is like. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one, he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. So I think it's important to understand that the story is saying that each got different amount according to what their abilities were, what the master thought they were capable of doing. So I'm going to continue reading in verse 16. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with the two talents gained two more. But the man who had received one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid it his master's money. Probably not a very good plan. Huh? So let's see what the master thinks when he comes back in verse 19. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. They're going to celebrate, right? Verse 22. The man with two talents also came. Master, he said, You have entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Let's see what happens to the third guy. Verse 24. Then the man who had received one talent came. Master, he said, I knew 
You are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. Here, this is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money in on deposit with the bankers so when i returned you would have i would have received interest hmm. take this talent from him and give it to the one who has 10 talents for everyone who has will be given more and he will have abundance and whoever does not have even what little they have will be taken from him and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hmm. Sounds like the gnashing, but it sounds like the weeping and gnashing of teeth is like it's hell. I think it is hell, actually. It's a really good. So he's being thrown into hell. Yep. Kayla? Kayla? It doesn't sound very pleasant at all. No, it doesn't sound very pleasant. Nope. No. Well, let's go ahead, Amy. It sounds horrible. Mm. Go ahead, Maya. Some Bible translations they say the lake of fire. No, they they usually say it this way: darkness, outer darkness, or yes. into the darkness. Well, let's go back and let's let's talk about the story a little bit. So, in the beginning of the story, the master gave different amounts of talents to each one of the servants, five to one, two to another, and one to the third. Do we understand why the master gave different amounts to each person? Go ahead. Because um, he interested, he trusted one more than the other. Because Close. Go ahead, Zoe. Because all the servants can handle the same amount. That's really good. How about you, Ayla? Because of their abilities. Because of their abilities, that's actually what it says. If you, if you look at the end of verse 15, each according to his ability. So what Jesus is saying that we are not all given the same abilities, but God doesn't expect the same from each one of us. He's going to give us what we think, what he thinks we can handle. He knows what you can handle because he he's our handle. father. Do we know what a talent is? A talent is like a money, but right now a talent is like what you can do. That's right. So a talent is is whatever that special thing is you have. In the day when Jesus was talking, it was money. In fact, a talent, a talent was more than a servant would earn in 20 years as a servant. So it, it was a lot of money. Right. So that's what a talent is. It's really money. We'll talk in terms of money instead of our skills and abilities. But those are things we should consider that God has entrusted us with. Because the talent we're talking about right now is, yes, money. Yeah, it's just money, but it so means everything be, else, too. We're not going to be talking about, like, what we can do. Go ahead, Amy. Talent right now is, like, what you can do. What you can do, like, the other way to, that's the other way to say ability. Abilities, mm -hmm. like, my ability is art. Mm, that's very good, you're right. That he is. Is dancing. Yep. Yes. And my is music, right? All right. Do we remember how much the first servant got? He got. The, he got five. The second servant. The second servant. He got um. Two. two. And the last servant got one. So they had different abilities, right? And that's the reason the master gave them different amounts. Because. They can't handle the same amount. So, which one do you think did the best with the money? Go ahead, Maya. The one with the two and the five, because they, he said the same thing to both of them. Yeah, they got the same praise. Go ahead, Zoe. What's the Ayla? Okay. <laughs> In both cases, the five made five more. They doubled the money. Two made two more. That's double. And in both cases, the master, when he came back, said, said um, good and faithful servant, share in my happiness and the big celebration, right? Mm -hmm. If you think of, go ahead, Zoe. But the last servant, 
You didn't get that same thing. You didn't get that same thing. You said you wicked and lazy servant. Why do you think you said wicked and lazy? Because he did nothing, nothing with the money. The money. Oh, he, he dug did. a hole in the ground and, and then did it. it. Taylor, what do you think? Okay. So, but he did. But he, he did. He did tell the truth, but he didn't try to do anything. And God gives us things. He does expect us to do something with it. We're not just supposed to hide it. And our money and, and our talents and whatever, whatever thing we've been given. Our house, our pets. Well, everything that we've been given. So, do you think it was fair that the last servant? Was going to get punished for being no. lazy? Why not? Well, it was fair and it was not fair nope. at the same time. Because he was not going to get to spend eternal life with God. The king. Well, that's but actually what it means. Into hell. That is what it means. And, and I guess the parallel in this story is Jesus is the master, right? And we yes. are the servant. And we're all going to be trusted. Jesus went traveling. Yeah, like when he died and he went back to heaven, he traveled away. But someday he's going to come back. And when he comes back, we're going to have to explain how we've used what God has given us. We're, we're responsible. Be a new earth. That's when, right. Once everybody dies in the earth, it's going to become a new earth. That's true. Taylor? If you take care of them, Jesus will be proud of you. That's and if you love him, you might really go with him to heaven. Well, it's the, the, the key is that we, we have to be good stewards of what God gives us. If we're not, that means we don't love God. We show God how much we love him by how we use the things that he has given us to use. That's what a follower does. We try to do what the leader, which is Jesus, wants us to do. So, I guess each of us are entrusted with something, whether it is money or a talent like dancing or art or music. And we need to use those skills for Jesus the way he wants us to use it. That was what being a good steward would be. We all have a reason to live in this world. That's right. Every one of us was made for a specific and unique reason. We're part of God's plan, and it's our job to use our skills the way God wants us to. Okay? That's how we really get happiness in this life, is by doing what Jesus wants us to do. Right? Yeah. Is that how we started to love? That actually is the reason we started our charity was because we wanted to be a good steward of what God had given us. We wanted to. God told us to do this, so we're doing it for God. That's right. I mean, when you're entrusted with things, you should be grateful. If I give you $5, are you grateful? Yes. About you? You're going to be grateful? Are you going to use that money any way you want? Or are you going to try to use it the way I would want you to use it? I would use that money and get more money that you just gave me. Well, that would be great. But you're going to try to use it the way that I would want you to use that yes. money. So there's a lot of ways we can use our abilities. And as kids, we can, we can use things other than money. You know, we can do things for our parents. We can do things for our friends. And those are using things that God has given us. Our skills, our smile, our ability to be friendly. Those are all things we can do to help others, which is exactly how God would want us to use those abilities and those skills. It doesn't always have to be about money. Do we understand? Mm -hmm. so, Not so much. Well, stewardship is a complicated thing to understand, especially when you're only six years old. But what stewardship means is it's using what you've been given like the person that gave it to you would want you to. Okay? We're going to talk about it in a, like, the next set of videos for the kids, right? Well, we'll maybe go through some more words. In our next video, we're going to talk about another parable of Jesus.
It's called The Parable of the Wise and Foolish Builders. Go ahead, Amy. You might sing a song for you guys. Yeah, we know the song. We're going to sing a song probably at the beginning about this next parable. It's one that you learn in Sunday school often. So go ahead, Amy. And it's a really fun song. And if you're watching the video, if you want to sing with us, you can. Who would like to close us with a prayer? Go ahead, Maya. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this home. Thank you for the talents you gave to us. Thank you for these parables so that we can learn. Thank you for friends and family. Thank you for the things you entrusted with us. Thank you for our money. Amen. Thank you. Amen. So thank you for joining us today at the kids' coffee table. I hope you enjoyed the message. Uh, if you're a child, make sure you ask your parents before, before you click, before you click, before you click, click the button like like again. Um, add it to them. Thumbs like, up button. Thumbs up or like button if you like the message. But, but ask your parents. Your parents your and we'd really appreciate you subscribing. It helps our ministry. But again, ask your parents before you do so. So and keep us keep watching our videos and share it with your friends. And you can leave us comments, or your parents can leave us comments here or on our website, or you can email me directly. We love your feedback. And again, ask. Yeah, our feedback helps us, you know, choose what it is we're going to do next as we do our family Bible study here around our coffee table. So until next time at the kids' coffee table. Bye. 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 Bye.